welcome back to another episode of Smitty's Gunsmithing. Today we're going to go over the disassembly, reassembly, and maintenance on the Remington Model 1100 shotguns. This took a model of the 20 gauge, and uh, this weapon is clear. There's nothing in the magazine tube, and there's nothing in the chamber. Chamber's locked open. So I'm going to drop the chamber. First thing you want to do to disassemble these, unscrew your magazine spring cap. Come out just like that. This particular model is missing the retainer for the magazine spring, so the magazine spring just follows it. Tilt your gun forward and out drops your follower, magazine follower. Set those to the side. Now you can slide off your forend. Set it to the side. Next thing you want to do is take out your trigger assembly pins and I'm just using a brass punch and knocking those out okay if they don't quite fall out you can pull it the rest of the way drop the trigger plate assembly set it to the side pull your barrel it's gonna straight out the front and right here you've got your barrel seal which is basically a thin o-ring Then you got your piston and your piston seal. All right, pull your operating handle. Tilt the shotgun over. This is gonna be your right shell latch, I believe is what it's called. You can feel right in here. You can see it right here. Press on that. And you can slide this assembly forward. There's your bolt assembly. And then here is your action bar. And this is your action bar sleeve. And all this is assembled together as basically one unit. Um, it can be taken apart, but it's not recommended to take it apart unless you got to replace parts. And you also have some uh, your plunger and stuff in here. This is what retains your operating handle. So it would slide in here like that. And there is a little ball detent right here. And that's what catches in that notch right there and retains your operating handle. So I'm going to set this to the side. Next, you want to pull out what this part's called. This is your link. It pulls forward like that, and you can rotate it, pull it out of the, out of the way. Now, often overlooked area of these shotguns that most people don't even think about when they're working on them. And I apologize if my head gets in the way of the camera. I'm trying to work in some very limited space right here, and I don't have a good way to record this other than having the camera up over my head. So, I apologize in advance for that but an often overlooked area of these guns when it comes to maintenance is going to be your action bar um well you got your action spring tube your action spring action spring plug action spring follower a few little parts that's all inside your butt stock right here okay and i've already loosened these for sake of time let's just take out these two screws and pull your butt plate off and that's just the extra o-ring i put in here for this guy i just worked on this shotgun and cleaned it up for him um last night actually or a couple nights ago so down inside your stock you're gonna have a wide screw headed um it's actually a nut for your action spring tube and you just want to loosen that up. And I'm just using a very wide tip hollow ground screwdriver bit. And as you loosen this up, your stock's going to begin to separate from your action. 
or your receiver. Okay. And your nut will fall out right here. And there's a lock washer that goes in front of it. So I'm gonna set those to the side. Move this stock out of the way so it don't get scratched. Okay. So now you're gonna want some kind of a vise for holding fixture that will help you greatly in doing this next part right here. And I'm choosing the Wheeler, I'm sorry, the real avid uh, master gun workstation. And I'm just gonna lock this in. And all this is gonna do is hold it securely while I take out this next part right here, which can be a little bit of a pain. I'm gonna reach over here and grab my biggest size uh, star at punch. And you wanna take, I'm gonna take the back side of it and I'm gonna press in here. And there's the action tube plug that sits right inside here and it's under spring pressure. So you want to push in on that just a little bit, enough to push out this retaining pin. And you have to mess with it a little bit. There we go. And you, just, you play with it, just a little press on that, to push out this pin. Remember this is under spring pressure, so hold it. So you can catch that action spring plug right there. And you can pull out the action spring plug and action spring. And the action spring just clips on over. There's a little recess right here that grips the spring and holds on to it. Just like that. Okay. So I'm going to release this from the box. And this is just a spacer that goes in, over the end of your receiver like that. Between the stock and the receiver. And pull it out of the way. And now your um, action spring follower should pop right out. Just like this. Okay. So what you want to do to clean these guns up, this is as far as you should disassemble it for cleaning. Um, there is this part right here. And let's see, part 39. I haven't referred back to my diagram because this isn't a gun I work on a lot. I'm trying to make sure I get you the right part number here or the part name. It's hard to see on this diagram. I thought it was 39, but apparently. 43 feed latch, I believe. No, this is the feed latch on the other side. Oh, well, I can't see it right now. Looking back, this far my eyes ain't what they used to be. But, um, in an 870, this would be your shell latch, and this would be your other shell latch. Uh, I'm not sure what it's called in this particular model, but anyway. You've got this one right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. This lighting is terrible, but it's right here. It's held in place by a retaining pin. Um, it's under a, like a snap spring. I don't recommend you take that out unless you need to replace it. The spring itself that operates this latch is staked in place, as well as this uh, latch right here is staked in place. And you don't need to take those apart for normal maintenance. What I do recommend doing when you clean these, clean up inside this action bar tube. Uh, you can use like a 410 bore mop or um, some patches and go up in here and clean that real well. To, um, get all the grit and crud out of there and everything. I recommend that you do clean out your magazine tube. You can use uh, some bigger patches or some bigger bore brushes. I'm sorry, bore mops. Go in there and clean that out. Scrub your action clean really good. The one area to pay attention to is 
is right in here behind your latches on either side of your mag tube. There's a recess right here. You can take some cotton swabs and go up in there and get behind those latches. You can come in like this at an angle and you can clean up in those areas really good. And then I would take some non chlorinated brake cleaner or some gun scrubber, it's a more expensive option and just spray in those corners and stuff right there with that strong jet and clean all that out the best you can um, so you don't impede the operation of everything. Once that's clean, Remington recommends in their owner's manual for 1100 take your uh, trigger plate assembly. This is your interceptor latch. Uh, this is your carrier, carrier dog, sear spring. This connector is down in here. Um, don't take this apart. Remington recommends to go in here and spray this out with Remington oil or Rim oil. Spray it really good. Let it sit a little bit. And then shake out the excess and then install it back into the gun. I don't recommend doing this. Um, reason being, oil is not good for stocks. You're really not supposed to store your guns barrel up, but most people do in your gun safes and your gun racks. And what happens when you leave all the oil inside here, what winds up happening is it runs up seeping out of all these nooks and crannies and cracks and holes and everything. And it's going to leak down to your stock. Wood, I'm sorry, oil softens the um, fibers in the wood and makes your stock easier to start splitting or cracking. Um, why they would recommend that you spray this out with oil, rim oil and then just shake out the excess. I have no idea, but it's not a very good idea at all. What I recommend with these, take you some uh, solvent, scrub it out really good with some um, toothbrushes or gun cleaning brushes. Soak out, uh, scrub out everything you can. Leave it assembled. Take some Q-tips, get out of here in all the nooks and crannies and holes and spots and get in there and scrub out all the crud that you can get to um, as best you can. Take some non chlorinated brake cleaner, some gun scrubber, um, some kind of aerosol, spray it out really good, and then shake that out. You can blow it out with a, um, after it dries, you can blow it out with an air compressor or whatever. Um, but don't leave this soaked in oil and then put it back in the gun. If you'll notice, there are some D clips right here. This one actually has them on both sides. Um, make sure you got at least one in here. Um, two is better, but make sure there's at least one and then you should have a D clip right here. Make sure those don't fall out. If they do, put them back. And that's all I recommend as far as other than you, you know, scrubbing out your bore um, with a bore brush, playing it with a bore mop and um, or some patches. The next area to pay close attention to uh, once you get your receiver cleaned out is your piston seal and your piston. If you notice they orient just like this you got the wider part and then you got this like slanted portion and it seats in there just like that okay this is going to build up carbon all along these two parts that you want to scrub off really good i recommend a good carbon cleaner one i found works well for me is to break through clean carbon pro um, heavy carbon remover uh, it's the best carbon removing product i have used to date that's why I recommend it. No, I don't get any kickbacks or uh, anything from Breakthrough for advertising their product. It'd be nice if I did, but I've been using their product for several months now, and I find them to be excellent. And their Carbon Pro, for sure, is one of the best products I found on the market for removing heavy carbon. Get that. Get it cleaned up really good. Your barrel assembly here right in here is where your gas ports are right there and right there hopefully you can see those on camera there's two holes right there this ring inside here is going to build up quite a bit of carbon it's going to deposit on there and harden i recommend taking a dental pick and for this gun, I use this one right here. I just went in here, 
I scrubbed that carbon off those rings, off that ring really good. And there's an inner ring right there that may build up some as well, but this outer ring right here is really what builds up most of the carbon. You clean all that really good. Take your toothbrush, scrub all out in there real good. Scrub out your um, barrel extension right here. Get all of that clean. Okay. Your action bar right here. Scrub all this out and the top and all, all the surfaces of this inside and out. Scrub that really good and make sure all the carbon's off of that. You can wipe off your mag spring with a cloth if you need to, if it's dirty. Um, check the condition of it, make sure it's good and clean. All right. Same thing with your uh, latch right here. Make sure it's clean. Your bolt assembly. Scrub it down, clean it really good. Um, if you absolutely need to take this apart, take the firing pin out and take your, um, try to what this is called on a minute. Lock and block, yeah. Your bolt, lock and block, firing pin, firing pin spring firing pin retaining pin, your ejector plunger and spring. Okay. This is a directional pin. Drive it out from the top downward. This retains your firing pin and spring. Pull it out. Then you can drop your lock and block out the bottom. Scrub your extractor really good. There's no need to take your extractor out unless you need to replace it. And if you do, um, take a little small screwdriver, pull back on your plunger, hold it, rotate your extractor forward, pull it out and then your plunger and spring can come out and you can clean up in there and replace your extractor or whatever. Um, don't recommend taking this apart unless you need to and really need to. Okay so when it comes to putting this all back together what I recommend what I have found works really good for me I'm going to start out Made your um, action spring follower. Give it a little square one shot. It goes back in in this direction with this opening right here forward. Push it on down there. Slid on down there mighty nicely. I take my action spring and plug. With a light coat and a one shot. Action spring goes in. The plug stays on the end right here, okay? punch back and your pin I'm just gonna hold this with my fingers push it in with a punch and when you get your hole lined up you just drop your pin in and even it out into action too gonna hold that in place release this I'm going to set the device back out of the way, or the workstation. It's a very nice workstation, by the way. I got it for Christmas, and I love it. All right. So now I'm going to get my stock. Put our spacer back on. Slide our stock back on. Next, here's your lock washer. And you want to put your finger down in there and feel. Make sure you got that around your action tube. And then you're going to put your nut on. The big end goes down. Take your big flathead. Start that easily. Make sure you don't cross thread it. That must thread on there so easily, it's ridiculous. And you can also spray these parts right here with um, some Hornady One Shot or whatever oil you choose. But I recommend the One Shot because it dries, it provides excellent lubricating properties, excellent rust prevention properties, and it don't run off and get into fibers of your stock and start breaking your um, wood fibers down in your stock, like most oils will.
Okay. So now we've got that back together. I recommend taking the Hornady one shot, spraying trigger plate assembly. Inside out, top and bottom. Spray inside your action. And that's all that's going to take. I'll again, spray the outside receiver as well. I'll hold off on that. Okay, first thing you want to start with. Here's your link right here. The T head in the T head of it. Goes in. Drop it in and then turn it. So it rests on your shell latches. Or your lat rail right here. All right. And then at the back, this is a little bit easier with a pair of pliers. Just squeeze the two legs together. And start them in your follower for your action tube or action spring right there. And then, if you listen, just push it back and it'll latch in place and it holds in that hole right there. Okay? It's pretty easy. Take your action bar assembly, slide it on. Get your bolt and I'm gonna spray the bolt down spray it fit in my hand spray my bolt down and I'm gonna spray the action bar And the magnitude down with one shot really well. Sit your bolt. These bolts on these 1100s, unlike the 870, are very sensitive to being exactly parallel inside here. And the least little bit they get tilted, they bind up. All right. So you're going to sit your bolt on here. And you got to get these legs lined up to where this will move rearward. Then you're going to press, reach in here on the right side and press that show latch. So this whole assembly moves rearward. Okay. Now's a good time. Again, put your operating handle in. Give it a little squirt of one shot as well. Push it in place. Now you want to take your trigger plate assembly. Put it in your receiver, line your holes up, and drop your pins in. The rear pin pushes in really easily. I'm going to take a nylon hammer, tap that first one into place. Now you can lock your action or your um, bolt stuff to the rear. Now I'm going to spray my piston seal, piston with one shot. And this is the important part. Your large portion has got the slanted opening. Your piston seal goes in first. Then the slanted side of your piston goes next. And they made up together just like that. That is important for a good seal, okay? And I'm gonna slide my barrel seal over the magazine tube. Get it past those threads. Once you get it past those threads, it'll slide easily. And it rests right in this notch right here, okay? Put my barrel in place. Just like that. 
Now you can slide your four ends in this. Oh, just like that. Drop your follower back in. And I like to take my follower and I spray it with a squirt of one shot as well as a spring. Just to keep that spring from rusting. Drop your follower in. Magazine spring in. If you had the magazine retaining pin, you'd put it in next, but we don't have that one. So take your magazine cap, push your mag spring in, and screw this down. Get it tight. All right. Now you can close your action. Safety zone. Trigger shouldn't move much. Push the trigger off, safety off. Trigger should fire now. And action cycles. Okay. Now, I'll take this extra o ring I put in here for this guy. This is one of the lieutenants that I work on with. It's his shotgun. Put your boat cap and screws back on. Tighten them down. And I've already sprayed this right here. But now I'm going to spray the barrel down. I've already done this one. I'm just showing you guys how to do it, but um, I would spray the barrel down before I put the four in assembly on. And then once you do that, you can wipe everything down with a cloth. And not leave a whole bunch of excess oil or everything on there. If you use Hornady one shot, you won't have to worry about that, but um, best gun lubrication product I found for giving good lubrication properties and as far as protecting it from rust. But there's your breakdown, reassembly of Remington 1100 with how to perform maintenance on it. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great day.